In the last video that we did on generic based views, we went over the view class and kind of did a heads down and deep dive into it so that we understood what all was going on. In this video, we're going to expand off of that and create a template view just like what's in the Django core. To start, we're going to look at our index view that we've, cre that we've created here in our home.views. And it's just a basic index view. It inherits from our view object and we've overridden the get method to accommodate for our get HTTP request and we're returning a template response. A template response is a response similar to HTTP response except it's built specifically for doing templates. It's very similar to using render or render to response. It's just a very convenient response to return and is, is what the template class based view uses. As you can notice, we just return a request and then we return a template with that. And then the next argument would be context data. It's just like using render in function based views. So the first thing that we're going to do is having the template listed out in our response is probably not necessarily the most reusable thing you can ever do. So what we can do to start, we'll put the template name as a property on our class and we'll set it to home slash index.html. The next thing that we need to do is in order to return that template response, we need a, in all honesty, a generic method um, to do that. And what we'll do is we'll create a render to response method in our index view. We'll pass it in context and any extra response keyword arguments that we want to use. And we'll just simply return template response. We'll return that request like we have below in our get will return the self.template name instead of hard coding it. That way we can just set it at the top and then we'll set context to whatever context is from our render to response and we'll return any response keyword arguments that we throw in there, in there that are extra. And that's it for our render to response. If we'll just call render to response in our get method and pass it an empty dictionary, then it's going to do the exact same thing as our return template response. And this makes our code just a little more generic. To show the extra context data in the dictionary, if we'll add data key and a data for a value, and we jump over to our browser and refresh the page, then you see we get data in our template. Now we're starting to build our view out a little bit. But in a lot of cases, we want to have context data in more than one view, in more than one type of view. So what Django does is it uses a context mixin to get context data. So we'll go ahead and create a context mixin, do a class, call it context mixin, it inherits from object, and we'll have a method called get context data that takes keyword arguments and just returns quarks. In this case, if you pass in a dictionary, it'll return that dictionary to you. And this is mostly built so that you can override it inside of your classes that inherit from the context mixin. So if we'll go ahead and add context mix in to our inheritance hierarchy in our index view, we can go in and do context equals self.getContextData. Then in our render to response, we just return the context variable that we set. And if we go back into our browser and refresh the page, then data is now gone because we're not populating it. So what that means is in order to populate that data again, we need to override get context data. We call the super of it to call the parents constructor. And then we get a dictionary back. So what we're going to do is we're going to populate the data key of this dictionary. And then let's run that in our browser and you see datum is returned back. So that's how it works with overriding get context data in our view when we have the context mix in. We'll go ahead and see about moving our render to response and our template name out into its own code. If we'll create a template response mixin, because this template response mixin will return a template response object, then as part of that, we also need the template name in there. So basically, it's just a copy and a paste for our template response mixin of that other code. And if we go into our index view, we just inherit from template response mixin. And then we go ahead and set the template name because above in our mixin, we set it to none so that it can be, again, fairly generic. So now if we refresh the page, our datum goes away, but we still have I am a template. This is because 
we aren't doing anything with get context data but as you know everything is still working and our index view is now a lot slimmer and some of that plumbing code is somewhere else the next thing that we want to do is we might want to actually have some logic wrapped around how we get our template names one scenario might be is you're doing some a b testing and you do that at, and you're doing part of that at a view level and so if certain criteria are met you would return two separate templates doing it the way we have it in our template response mix-in where we just pull in the template name from the property on there that doesn't actually work too well so in order to accommodate that we can create a get template names method just like it is in the Django core for template response mix-in in there we first go ahead and check if our template name is set if it's set to none then we just raise it in properly configured else we just return our self dot template name this makes it so that when we inherit from template response mixin and we override the get template names then we get the logic that we choose otherwise it defaults to getting the template names and hinting at you when you don't set things up correctly then we follow that up by going into our render to response method and changing self template name to self get template names then if we'll jump into our browser and refresh the page we can see it still works because it looks like nothing happened almost so now we're actually ready to take our final step we're ready to convert that index view into a template view now first we remove our template name and then we rename index view into template view then we'll go down below and create a new index view inherit from template view and then set our template name and that's it if we jump back into our browser you see it still works we can go ahead and override our get context data and then add a new data key with a new data value of hello world and then run that in our browser and it works to show off what we've built a little bit let's go ahead and create another view called index to view inherit from template view and give it its own template that we want to reference first we need to open up our template we'll save this one off as index2.html and go ahead and modify our in current index.html template by adding in an extra word there then we need to go in and add our URL for second and use index2.view.asView and then we'll go ahead and import that as well so jumping into our browser you can see our page still works if we go to slash second then we have the I am template if we go back and refresh the page we get I am a second template because we edited that first template so now we have effectively two views that we created to show in this case static data or data that we have with context data and all it is is two lines of code each so four lines of code to get a template response to get all of the value that we have from our view and to get a lot of stuff available to us in making our views a little more advanced and a little more robust you can easily go ahead and remove all of our code that we just wrote and import the template view from our django.views.generic and it would work just as well this is the power that using our generic class-based views in django gives you is it takes care of all of this cruft that you would have to write for each and every one of your views when maybe all you want to do is just show some static HTML. In this case, you just inherit from template view, you set a template name, and you're off and ready to go. As usual, I suggest you actually go ahead and do a little playing around with this and maybe do some experimenting, and I definitely recommend that you use your generic class-based views, especially the template view when all you want to do is show some static content and you need to get it on the page quickly. I want to thank you for watching and join us next time as we explore more class-based views and other Python and Django topics.